Excuse me. Did I like it? No. It's on mom's account. I want to show you how I made it. Lame. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Oh, yeah, you want to log me out? Oh. Oh, yeah, you want to log me out? Oh. Uh, um, um. Hello, everybody. Just a second, we got some technical things here if you want to again. I don't know how we'll... Can you go in the chat if you log in? Just do it if you want. Okay, go ahead. Okay, it doesn't show that you're going live from... What? No. No, we're live. We're live right now. Log hey, out. everyone! Log out. Hey, everybody, welcome. Uh, I see we have some folks here already. I think we have like six people to get started. We just have to uh, do a little rebooting here. Um, just so we can monitor things. Uh, I don't know if anybody's joined in the last minute or so, but I know. Uh, Actually, uh, I suppose I should, the first thing I have to do is check in and make sure everybody can see and hear us. And um, right now I don't really have chat, uh, JW speakers saying hi G. Uh, can anybody, everybody see and hear us? Um, I know the Magnus is here, which is always great to see. The Magnus, it's, uh, what is it, two o'clock over in Sweden? Oh, I'm sending it as me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a second, folks. Hope everybody's doing good. It's Mrs. G. Schultz. I'm not supposed to be watching my videos. Um, um, oh, then that's fine. Whatever you want me to do. Can we just watch it logged out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, we need to start over. Um, <laughs> I know the Magnus is here. The Magnus is here. Uh, Ration Museum is here, too. I don't know if it still is. Uh, Sean, are you still there? Uh, great to see you here. Um, I did want to do some plugging for some people, but um, I'm going to let everybody settle in, and we kind of have to get things working. We're a little a little bit uh, out of sorts at the moment. Um, I saw uh, Timothy Shanks was here. I think he was saying that he uh, doesn't like last-minute Friday Night Live streams and was going to check it on the rerun, and I'm glad to hear anybody willing to check it on the rerun. That's pretty cool. Um, but it wasn't really last-minute. I just He obviously probably isn't uh, following me on... Facebook or Instagram because I did uh, put out a uh, yep. a thing there, what two or three days ago. Anyway, uh, Golden Ingus here. Hi, Lloyd's. Welcome. Uh, Levin and Stella Fighter, Eve Black, Aletha, and Dub C. And um, uh, there's gonna be some more too. I'm just it's gonna be it's I have a tough time keeping up with the with the chat. And right now we're actually not even on on the computer. Uh, so anyway, uh, welcome to the live stream. This is the ninth G Shells Nine live stream, and actually, this is a good time. If anybody is watching this on the replay and has been able to sit through these first five minutes or so, um, I appreciate it. <clears throat> and I know these live streams aren't for everyone. Uh, I always end up doing this uh, this little disclaimer, um, and it's not. It's really not for the people who are here because people who are here are here and are part of the community, and it's this is what makes it all so fun. Um, but there are obviously people who don't like live streams or people who don't like the fact that I do live streams and they want the regular videos and I completely get that. I completely get that people have subscribed to me because of what I've done over the past 10 years and I haven't been doing that for the last year and almost a half now. Um, and because of that, the channel has suffered. I've lost about a thousand subscribers and I don't blame YouTube for that. I don't blame the subscribers for that. That's totally my fault because I just have not been able to do the videos. Once everything shut down last year, uh, I was in a different place and it just hasn't really worked out to be able to um, get back to doing the, the regular videos. I'm not planning on never doing them again. I'm not planning on only being a live streamer, but this has become a great way to keep in touch with the community. And there's this great little community that's here. And uh, a lot of that started uh, from Old Smokey's channel, his uh, weekly live streams. And I know a lot of people have come over from that, which is it's, it's really great to see these people who I get to see on Saturday nights. And uh, the Ration Museum also has um, Sunday afternoon live streams, too. Uh, so some of the people who uh, are from there are probably here, too. And basically, the, the bottom line is I hope to get back to doing regular reviews someday. 
I really appreciate everybody who tunes in for the live streams. I know they're not for everybody. Uh, I'm not generally somebody who watches a lot of live streams other than the ones I mentioned, Little Smokies and the Rash Museums. Um, I am going to plug theirs, and anybody else who does do live streams who's in the in the chat, feel free to plug yours. Um, I know it was Sunshine Side of Life that does some live streams, or Aletha, I know some, somebody does, and um, I haven't been able to get around to seeing them because, like I said, I don't watch a lot of live streams. But I would be more than happy to have people um, plug their own live streams in the uh, in the chat. And hopefully at some point we'll be able to see the chat. Now we can. Oh, I did it. Anyway, uh, we're we're back on that, so I can see who's here. I see Curious Pete's here. Welcome, Curious. Um, uh, one thing I will mention is that the right now, probably starting right about now, the uh, Red Sox and the Yankees are playing over at Runaway Park. So that's um, kind of a cool thing. And the only reason I mention that is because I know Pete sometimes will uh, poke fun at me when the when the Red Sox lose because we are in the New England area. So big fan of the local teams. You get to support your local teams. So, Mrs. G. Hey. Hey. How are you? Um, okay. Yeah? Yeah, a little, a little summer... rocky start there, but I'm glad we're here. Well, you know, that's life, isn't it? It is life. And does somebody else want to say hi? Hey. Hey, we have one of the little Gs here. The other one should be around at some point. Hi! Uh, yeah, oh. there's the other one <laughs> uh, from the other room, busy on her phone. We're kind of rowdy. <clears throat> it's, a, it's a beautiful it's, summer night. It's Friday night. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Nice. The humidity finally broke. And uh, yeah, we had a beautiful day. So we're we're a little rowdy. I'm just wrapping yeah. up uh, wrapping up the pre meal, which I have to say I did have okay. some early kale. Ding ding ding! Kale has been mentioned. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You Actually, you know the smell in the kitchen. That was oh. from the kale that I oh, cooked the, yesterday. Oh, the chips, the kale chips. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had this. We had this curious sort of. Um, <laughs> bad smell in the kitchen that was organic kind of smelling and we were having a hard time figuring out what it was and mrs g last night made um as part of dinner she made um kale chips which is always a, a fun addition if you have to have kale it's good to have them uh fried in the oven with some salt and, and uh olive oil it's just like potato chips but there was yeah it's <laughs> it's something but it is they are good and there was leftovers and i put them in a little bowl and just left it out overnight and it didn't smell that great today so i guess we're not eating that as leftovers um, I did see Dubs. Oh, you ate some. Mm -hmm. uh, Dubs C S R uh, said said that he was planning or thinking of doing some live streams, but having some problems. But um, Dubs Dub definitely puts out a lot of great videos without having the live streams, which is great. I mean, that's what I wish I was getting back to. Uh, go over and check out Dubs C's channel. And um, let me just uh, look back here because now I've completely lost track of uh, who's here. Oh, BB five 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 six two. I think that's if you don't mind me using your first name, I believe that's Byron. That's one of my uh, best friends of all time. I mean, literally, one of my best friends from childhood. <laughs> Not that they'd be like, just throwing on something. Uh, and Puppy Breath, welcome. I uh, said, uh, Curious Pete. JW Speaker MRE is here, and I had um, told him about this a few days. I emailed him because I was hoping he'd be able to show up because he is the, uh, the founder of the feast, as it were, because he actually is the one that sent me this MRE. So I wanted to send out a huge thank you to him. And uh, go check out JW Speaker MRE's channel. Uh, the name JW Speaker and JW Speaker MRE, obviously the MRE part is because of the, the main focus of the channel, but JW Speaker, uh, interesting name if you don't know what it, what it stands for, and I didn't for a while. <clears throat> it took me a while to figure out. I'm not going to spoil it here. You can go to his channel and figure that out uh, unless somebody spoils it in the, in the, uh, in the uh, chat. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to see who else is here. Divine Spirits Taco Girl. Mes oh, sorry. Divine Spirits Taco Girl Messages TV. That is a name. Wow. Yeah. Sun, 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 sunshine. I don't know why I was such a hard time saying sunshine, but sunshine inside of Life 77 is here. I may have mentioned that. I may not have. Uh, oh, Marilyn's here. Thank you, Marilyn, for coming in and being a moderator. I um, I know you had mentioned in one of the posts that you were probably going to be late, so that's not too bad being 10 minutes late. Uh, I'm glad to see you here. Henry Anna. That's a name I don't really recognize, but welcome. And let's see. Oh, yeah, that, that definitely is Byron. <laughs> I see. Same typical. Uh, inside joke. Lethal Wolf. Lethal Wolf says, hi, Mrs. G. Ted Ekam. What? Ted <laughs> Ekam. Uh, how gross do you think this thing will be? You know what? I am actually uh, obviously hoping it won't be gross, but um, uh, it's definitely a very good chance that it will be. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, 
about expectations and whatnot. I uh, have my own expectations. Booger button, booger button, MRE, welcome. Christine SP, I'm hoping I'm getting everybody. Uh, and now I'm going to start talking some more. Uh, yeah, Mrs. G, what your expectations? That you're not oh, going to eat it? I just ate, so that'll probably tell you something. Yeah, so um, <laughs> doing ration reviews, I've, I, I've, I've never really been one of the more adventurous people, like Old Smokey and, and obviously Steve1989. And some other people who eat the really old stuff and the really weird stuff, I usually have stuck more closely to MREs, uh, genuine ones and commercial ones. And um, I like them as fresh as possible. I usually can't get very fresh ones, but you know, I, within date, I usually like them. And I definitely have done a lot that were older, 5, 10, 15, 20 years old. And I've done a couple that were in, in the 30s. And I actually have done, I mentioned um, in the... In the Comment, not the commentary, the, uh, what do you call that underneath there? The, uh, Comments? The, no, the, uh, the, description? the description. Thank you, small town. <laughs> in the description, I mentioned that I had reviewed this one already. It was a 1987 one. This is 1986. And um, Steve1989, speaking of Steve, he sent me a 1987 one, which I've already done a review for, which is part of the reason why um, I thought it would be okay to do this in a live stream. I kind of wanted to save this. It's... It's just an old MRE, but to me this is kind of something that's uh, sort of a special thing. But I have reviewed this, basically the same thing, just from one year later. Uh, so I figured it'd be a really fun topic for a live stream. And um, as usual, I started talking about two different things, and I lost track of what I was talking about. But um, How gross MREs can get? Uh, oh, the 1987 one that Steve... Yes, the grossness. <laughs> the 1987 one that Steve sent me had, had been stored great. I, I, didn't, I, I never, got confirmation, never got confirmation if it was... A frozen one that you know one that had been frozen for a number of years but it wouldn't surprise me if it was because it was in great shape and almost everything was edible um jw speaker reviewed a menu number one which actually funny is because it's menu number two and i don't know if he's done any oh horny animal i see a lot uh i see a super chat thank you very much um you have to see what oh there it is it showed up on the phone first before the computer hope you're having a great day it actually has been a great day it's been it's really nice out uh which Mm, you can't really the tell, but it's still been so pretty yeah, it's still, still pretty nice out there. It was nice and warm, but not overly hot. It was a, a weird little rain shower that was kind of unexpected, but it's been a good, it's been a great day overall. And uh, thank you very much, Ronnie. I really appreciate that. I guess I believe that's the first uh, super chat of the night. So uh, and welcome too, welcome horny speaker, uh, horny horny animal. I didn't, I didn't get to say that either. <clears throat> because I was trying to say something which I've now forgotten about. Um, that 1987 one, I don't know whether it was frozen or not, but it was in really great shape. Pretty much everything was edible. Um, from what I remember, it was three years ago that I reviewed it. And I, I, Smitty's here. Um, I, in, uh, I, I don't know. I remember, I, remember, I remember the entree was definitely edible. This one, I don't know if it will be or not. Um, the, it was a pork patty that JW Speaker reviewed from the same case. He opened up a case. I, I have a, uh, a link down in the description, thanks to me, uh, of his, um, it was a case opening of a, a sealed 1986 MRE case, which is why I actually originally had put this down as an early 80s MRE because I thought I didn't know the year, but I forgot that it was uh, a case from 1986. This is obviously before there were date codes. And that one was a mixed bag. I think the pork patty was, was fine, but that's because it was freeze dried, so you would kind of expect that. The cheese spread was very bad. I know he threw it away. He didn't even, like once he got the smell, it was enough. And um, the crackers were, I believe he said they were kind of stale. I they, he did mention the word bleach, but it didn't sound like they were totally bleached out. And the applesauce was really dark. So that's part of the reason why the family has already eaten. They've already had some burritos, some with kale and some without, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm not, planning on this being a family meal you know I mean I, that's what that's what I was gonna say earlier I've done a lot of videos uh, and I have done some old stuff it's not really my specialty um, but I do love looking at the stuff and this one does have sort of special meaning for me uh, because it was one of my favorites when I was in the service but I certainly don't expect my wife and my two daughters to be eating a 35 year old ham and chicken loaf Appreciate that. which brings us to the topic of tonight's live stream it's a 1986 Meal ready to eat, menu number two, ham and chicken loaf with bean component, not for pre-flight slash flight use, with accessory packet C from Right Away Foods Corp, McAllen, Texas, and 78501. So when I was in the service, it was, uh, it was around the time when, when the first generation MREs were out. This, that's what these brown bag ones, these are the first generation of MREs um, 
they were introduced in 1981. Uh, another part of the reason for wanting to do this one for this live stream, uh, this whole year I've been kind of celebrating the 40th birthday of the MRE. It doesn't seem like anybody else is really as excited about that as I am, but uh, it was 40 years ago that they were first introduced to troops. Obviously they were in um, uh, research and development for a lot longer than that and testing and everything. But the first ones went live in 1981, which just happened to be the year that my brother went into the Marines. And that's how it is that I was able to actually get one of the earlier MREs because I remember, I remember him coming home and telling me, I didn't know all the, the terms and everything, but basically he was saying that they were phasing out the sea rations of the MCIs, the meal combat individuals, and replacing them with these new things called MREs. And he actually brought one home for me and I was like, oh, this is really cool. I was, as a kid, I used to, I used to play army and I used to like go into like army navy stores and they had like little sea ration components. And um, anyway, when I actually went into the service, um, the ham and chicken loaf is still around. It, it, I think it's going to go down as one of the one of the most unfortunately named MREs, at least appetizing sounding ham and chicken loaf. And I love the fact that it had had beans as a side, but they always they would always put it on the uh, four fingers of death, the uh, frankfurters, and this one, and maybe a, a couple other ones. I don't know if the freeze dried something something else had the the bean component, but instead of saying like you know baked beans or something like that it's just bean component like it just it doesn't sound they weren't as much into trying to make things sound appetizing back then they're just kind of telling you what it was and i always loved the warning whenever it had beans they would always say not for pre-flight slash flight use it almost sounds like a joke you know you, you're like mm, you know but gas you know mm -hmm. beans beans magical fruit i'm going back in your chat our friend ah, claudia, thank you. claudia and uh Welcome, and Claudia. Are here. Welcome, you guys. Tiana, I'm sure. I don't know if um, I don't think you guys were in when the brown bags were in. You're not as old as I am, but uh, I know you guys have had uh, your share of MREs. Uh, actually, yeah, you can mention it if you do remember. I'm, I'm sure you guys weren't around this this long ago. <laughs> You're uh, old. I'm an old guy. You are really old. Uh, but the interesting thing about this, uh, another thing I want to plug is mreinfo.com. I think everybody here who's a regular. You know, is very well is very familiar with mreinfo.com, um, but if you're not, it's a, the greatest place to go to find reliable information about MREs if you're looking for something. And I went there today. I I kind of didn't want to like relearn anything about this one. I kind of wanted to open it up and be kind of surprised as to what was in it. But I did go there and I did check it out. And in 1986, according to mreinfo.com, it was accessory packet A, which is one of the more boring ones. And this one actually does say on accessory packet C. So I'm hoping that's what's going to be in here. And that was what was in the 1987 one. So, uh, you haven't seen Old Smokey, have you? Um, I'm, I haven't scrolled down. Gemini Twin said, the, and said subscribed so long, just now realize you're, you're doing live streams. Great to see you live. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I'm scrolling down, sorry. Brooks says, hey, heart, 76. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, there were a few people who you didn't mention that I was like, oh, mm -hmm. whoa, they're Dirk says, hey. All right. Hey. Hey. Eddie says, hello. So I don't want to spend too much time. I, I have like some interesting things to do later. Uh, but once again, we're going to put the hard stop at two hours on this. Uh, if it's a little shorter, that probably even better. I, I know it's hard to sit and watch a two-hour video after these things aren't live anymore. I mean, we could, just, we could do this all night. And if people were you know, willing to hang out, I'd love to do that. But knowing that this video is going to then render and become a regular video. Uh, you gonna get to it? It's, that's, a, that's a long time to be sitting through. Uh, yeah. So one thing I'll say is that I do have backups. Uh, I, I just did a, uh, a Facebook and Instagram post mentioning this, but uh, <laughs> I came into possession of this at work. Um, it's a, a, a can from Lakeside, a company I've never heard of. Where are they from? Um, uh, oh boy, I don't know how to Manitowoc. W.I. is Wisconsin, right? And um, it's a can of 24 ounces of pork with juices. And that's all it says. <laughs> and I like the picture, too. It's got the pig, and it's got examples of all the different kind of pig meats. Robert Miller says, first time viewer. <clears throat> hey, welcome, Robert. Appreciate you being here. TJ Self, I see you there. Um, <clears throat> Kaylin Strand, I don't know if I said hi to you. If I didn't, then hello, and if I did, hello again. And uh, thanks for being here, Smitty. I, I, I think I did say hi to you, but I appreciate you being here. How's everything going up uh, north of the border? 
let me see. Uh, oh, the other interesting thing about this is, so it's, it, like, like a, let's see if you can hear this. That's the juices, apparently. And, and the ingredients is the best part of this, because we also have Spam. That's another thing, just as an example of what this is like. We've had a whole Spam show before, so we're not going to get into this kind of Spam. Oh, oh Super, super Chat from, from Dirk. Dirk. Was that Euros? Thank you so much. Thank you, Dirk. Where is that? Where, uh, where are you from? I think from? he said Belgium. Belgium. I could be imagining that, but I think that's what he said. This is my recall. I'm trying. I'm mm -hmm. trying really appreciate hard. that. Yeah, appreciate having Mrs. G here as a moderator too. Because um, I mean, I just I don't know how Smokey does this. No. He, he, Maryland is amazing. He does keep up with the <laughs> Maryland and Co. Maryland is amazing. Yep, Belgium. Ding ding. Uh, so uh, so I, I think we are going to open this regardless of anything else, just because it's pork juices. So the thing that's interesting about it is the ingredients, and that's what I was going to say on the on the spam. You can see you think of spam as ham, but it's actually pork with ham dub oh dub c thank you very much what does he say Aww, you can read hello, that everyone always great to have a friday night g streams brings the community together no, i appreciate that I appreciate That's that very baby. much dub i mean smoky is amazing he does this almost every single week and i can't even do it every month like i, I that's kind of like what would be cool to be doing like once a month but it just doesn't doesn't really work out that way so uh i really appreciate everyone being here We're glad and to be i here. appreciate that from dub c thank you for the super chat <laughs> uh check out dub c's channel too um so it's spam you think of it as ham i don't know what the s really stands for uh somebody will will, will have that answer i know I've, I've heard that before but i don't remember but the ingredients actually the first ingredient is pork and then it's ham with mechanically separated chicken so we do have the ham and chicken and we also have the pork which is what this is just pork so um i keep not saying this but shoulder check out pork and ham. shoulder pork and ham okay so oh all right p-a-m pork and ham okay that makes sense Oh, that's cool. Uh, who, who said who told us that? That's John Petruna. Said Thank that. you, John. I appreciate that. Uh, Rick Lane, I don't know if I said hi to you. Welcome. Uh, oh, Spice Ham says uh, says Ration Museum. Uh, I keep losing my track of this, but I I just really do want to uh, showcase the fact that the ingredients is pork and salt for this whole big can. That's all that it says, and it does have, it says this pork is fully cooked in its own juices and ready to use. Use cut up pork for salads, sandwiches, soups, stews, barbecue, spaghetti sauce, meat pies, casseroles, tacos, or over egg noodles. Use juices and fat from canned pork to flavor cooked vegetables, soups, or gravy. Doesn't that sound appetizing? It, it, it kind of sounds, it, it sort of sounds. Um, well, somebody really put some effort into that marketing. Uh, yeah, and they have their like, colors here. Wow, and, for as little of, a, you know, like it's a really simple can, but. It, you know what it sounds to me? It sounds very uh, Depression era, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a, a can of pork, and it's like you, you make use of that. You use it in all these different things, and then you even use the juices. You don't throw those away. You use them, too. Mm -hmm. So we'll have uh, we'll check that out later. And um, <clears throat> now, meanwhile, we're going to get to this 1986 MRE, uh, which, as I mentioned, JW Speaker MRE sent it along. Um, one last thing before we do start. I, I, I was hoping that Smokey would be here, but I know uh, the Russian Museum is here. And I do want to say that this is the, um, if you can't get enough of uh, Ration live streams, this is uh, one of those weekends for you. Like every, mm -hmm. every few months we get one of these, it's like, a, it's like a blue moon or something, where we have the G-Shells 9 stream on Friday, Old Smokey stream on Saturday, um, which is usually between like 8 and 9, somewhere around there. But he sends, out, um, he sends out notifications. He has some problems with youtube not promoting his stuff and um so I, I did want to at least mention that to anybody here who's not a regular a lot of people here are regulars in smoky streams <clears throat> but if you're not good uh just type in old smoky I, I have a uh uh a link down in the description for old smoky and i don't know if i put it in the ration museum but if you don't want to even use the link just go into the 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 search bar at the top of youtube and just put in old smoky and it will come up there's other stuff that comes up too but um just for the ones about mres and the Ration Museum, just put in Ration Museum and that'll come up. And Sean from the Ration Museum does live streams almost every week on Sunday afternoons. Uh, I believe the one this weekend is um, set for 3 o'clock. He has it already set up like I do uh, beforehand. So we, tonight we have the G Shells 9 one. Tomorrow we have Old Smokey, uh, the, the Saturday Night Smoke Show around eight, between 8 and 9. And Sunday is the Ration Museum. And I actually did put down... I don't want to have too much of this um, dead air, but I do want to mention... <clears throat> oh, Kaylin Strain streams on Sundays. Uh, is that before or after the, uh, the Ration Museum, Kaylin? Because I do need to check out one of those. After the tactical team. 
Oh, we have a dislike. That's nice. <laughs> Thank you, Outdoor Tactical, for pointing that out. <laughs> well, like, like Smokey says, you know, uh, it's one, one thing. I, I, I've, I've never been one to say at the end of my videos, and I probably should have. I've never been one to say, please like, subscribe, comment. <clears throat> Obviously, I want people to do all those things. I just, I just never really felt comfortable saying that. <clears throat> like, kind of assuming people would do that. But Smokey always says, if you're watching this, if you're here, if you're watching it, or if you're watching it later, hit that, hit those thumb buttons. He doesn't say hit the like button. He says up or down, either way, it, it makes a difference on YouTube. You know, YouTube, the algorithms and everything, it, it will read that. So, so I don't know who that was with the dislike, but thank you very much. <laughs> and we're up to 35 likes, so that's really pretty cool. Actually, what are we up to for, um, for viewers right now? Uh, 36. 36, that's awesome. So we, we got 35 people who are liking it and one that's uh, not liking it. I'm sorry about that. Maybe it's because we're not getting to this. And we're, oh my God, we're almost a half an hour into this thing. I think thing. we should open it. Um, it needs to be happening. We should, but I do have to, uh, all right, so here it is. I, I have all this stuff written down, but it's it's like in, like, you know, cat scratch. Mm -hmm. The Ration Museum on Sunday, the live stream is going to be, it's uh, the uh, thumbnail says, Baking a Museum from Scratch. And it's both number 48. So they've, he's done at 48. I don't know if they've all been live streams, but um, this is number 48. It was a, uh, another four hour cataloging session where he's gonna be doing more photography of uh, some of the collection and everything. And Smokey, I have a little, a little preview here. I was uh, talking to Smokey earlier uh, you know, by text and this is not guaranteed. I don't want anyone to like tune in tomorrow and say, hey, uh, G Shells 9 said you're gonna be doing blah, blah, and you're not. But what he was thinking of doing for tomorrow He's still getting things set up uh, for a topic that was going to be, uh, what is an ORP? And I wonder how many people here know what an ORP is. I know probably at least 25 people will. Um, and even though Smokey's going to answer that, I'll also answer it too. An ORP is an uh, operational ration pack from uh, the Great Britain. It's a, uh, it always was a 24-hour ration, but I know that now they have, um, they have single ones too, I believe. I haven't seen one of those yet. Pause. Rick says, hey, from Holland. Hello, Rick. And Sonia says... Hey, from Jamaica. Hello, Sonny. Welcome. And that's it. That's okay, that's it for the new ones. Thank you for keeping track of the new ones. There's a G's on it. Um, so an ORP is an operational ration pack. And he is planning on reviewing one tomorrow. And another thing of uh, the Smokey Show, the old Smoke Show, is that he, uh, the, the Saturday Night Smoke Show, is that he usually, I don't know if review is the right word, but he usually drinks a beer, which I'm going to be doing that very soon. Uh, but he re he drinks an old vintage beer that usually is is very old, thirty, forty, more or more years old, and it's it's kind of a like a train wreck kind of thing because you kind of like don't do it, you know. But once he starts, you like you know chug chug chug, and and a lot of times there's chunks in them, and I don't know how he does it. And this actually, uh, we, you know, kind of going with the retro theme with the 1986 MRE. This is uh, one of my favorite beers, the Narragansett, and I've talked about this before. They put these sometimes in the uh the retro can from 1975 and this is the can that they used in jaws well they didn't use it in jaws but the can in jaws that quint uh when he's on the boat he uh he downs his can and then he crushes it and so they that's one of the um Narragansett's uh catchphrases is crush it like quint so this is a 1975 style can but it's a brand new beer smoky if he was to get his hands on a 1975 Narragansett beer he would actually drink it um, I don't do that. But so Smokey's thing tomorrow will be what is an ORP, and because it's a 24-hour ration, he said he may actually have two beers because it's you know it's a bigger ration. But uh, tune in tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to because we are going to be getting hammered. <laughs> that is that is indeed the plan. Uh, there, and, there is a chance I won't wow, be. I won't yeah, be. Able, I, I don't know if I should have said that, but we gonna we're going to be hanging out with some friends and. Um, there may, there may be some libations going along, so uh, we will see. But um, I guess we should uh, cheers, and then we'll start this. Uh, what do you have, a little wine there? Yep. Can... Ding. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. Welcome to the live stream. Half an hour in, we're going to get started. All right, and Rick, we did give you a shout-out. Holland, woo-woo! That's one place I'd love to go. That's good stuff. We'll give you another one. I won't talk more about beer. <clears throat> so... The 1986 brown bag MREs, as I mentioned, do not have date codes, so they are hard to date if you don't know the, the background. Luckily, I know this came from a case of 1986 ones. Uh, and they also don't have an easy to pe easy open, easy peel seal. They just have this notch here, so you're supposed to rip it. But because this is so old, it's 35 years old, as we're celebrating the 40th anniversary of the MRE, uh, and I, I, I do want to keep this one, so I am going to uh, 
cut this from the back so I can have a little memento. Oh, Lord. Really? Well, you don't think that's... It's, it's an antique. <clears throat> Anything over 25 years old is an antique, and this is 35 years old. Oh, we should do the sniff test first. <laughs> oh, boy. <sighs> and all it smells like is plastic. Oh. That is exactly what you want. That's a good, a good start. Okay. Did you want to bring out the guineas? <laughs> do it now here. We just started, but we do have to do one thing because I don't want to keep... Uh, no, no, we no, have no, the little, we have the little the one here. Of, uh... No, I'm not even looking at it. Yeah, yeah. We get the little one here, and she's like waiting patiently, and I just realized that we didn't. No, uh... she's watching. She's making a sculpture. No, no. Okay, never mind. She's and um, mind. old Smokey is also uh, mm. he's pretty much my um, my um, inspiration yeah. for live streams. He was encouraging me to do live streams for a long time, and I resisted for as long as I could. But um, he's really the only one that I was watching before I started doing these. <clears throat> so I've kind of modeled that after him. And one thing he's been doing lately was he had uh, these four, was it four or five little kittens that uh, were born near him. They weren't exactly his, but he was taking care of them. And he would put them on the uh, streams every Saturday, and everybody loved seeing them. It was a great thing, and we get to see them growing up. The girls loved them. The uh, our elder, one of the one of the kitties, reminded her of one of her friends, and we just like watched them growing up. And then he was able to find homes for most of them, which was great. Uh, one of them is still there, so you still get to see that one, and now it's like a cat instead of a kitten, but it's still uh, still great to see. And so, as a as a response, we actually can also show live animals too, because we have our, our guinea pigs. And actually, we, we're also using a small table here. We had oh, to take we had boy. we had to take the oh leaf out of the God. table. We have such a situation. <clears throat> we do have a situation. I have this stuff sitting here, and people are waiting to hear about it, but I, I can't not say this. We have two guinea pigs. For anyone who hasn't been watching the streams. And they've been great. We, they're the, the cutest things in the world. They're so cute. And uh, they're fun. They're funny. The, the problem is that you do have to feed them. They love kale, like Mrs. G does, so it's uh, they're kind of a kindred spirit. Uh, but they, they need to be clean, too. They, their cage needs to be clean, and that is, like, the worst thing in the world. Like, he, the, the, the girls clean the cage, but I clean the, the, uh, the bedding, the stuff that we use for, you know, like towels and fleece and stuff. And <clears throat> so we have two of them. But why is our table smaller than usual, and why am I like cramped around it and trying to like have a, a computer over here and an MRE here and not much, not much other space? Because we had to take the leaf out of the table because we have a third guinea pig. <clears throat> uh, we're actually watching uh, friends of the uh, the, the elders. Uh, they went to Spain, and after we got our guinea pig, we were talking about it, and they ended up adopting one too. And so we, um, you know, kind of decided to um, we we're gonna like share. Uh, what do you call it? Share guinea pig sitting duties. And um, we have theirs for like three weeks. So that's Milo in the uh, blue thing right there. Of course, they're all, they're all napping right now, but they'll, they'll probably be screaming for food later on. Uh, but that's Milo. That's our guest. And over here, I don't know. I think usually it's, uh, I think this is uh, Samoa, Samoa and that's Coco. Coco. Okay, Samoa's over here and Coco's over here. And they may make an appearance at some point tonight. Uh, but they've uh, they've been featured before, so they don't necessarily have to, and they're they're sleeping now. So, back to the review. Sorry about that. That message was brought to you by Narragansett Beer. Mm. I love Magnus. Is refreshing. Comment. Magnus is like I'm not even married, but I know that tone about that ancient uh, keeping the ancient plastic. Thank you, Magnus. Oh, boy. <clears throat> yeah, you don't, you don't even have to be married to know that, do you? So we have this 1986 MRE. Uh, the first uh, thing we notice is that everything, uh, there's no weird smells coming out of it, so apparently nothing has leaked. <clears throat> but here we have the, uh, the five ounce entree, ham and chicken loaf. It sounds so appetizing. As I, as I mentioned though, this was back when there was only 12 menus, and of course there was uh, spaghetti and meat sauce, there was beef stew, some of the stalwarts, the, the, the all time favorites, the, the comfort foods that are still around. And, and they were always good, too, but I, I actually like this. And anybody who saw the Spam live stream knows that I also don't hate Spam. So, I mean, it's probably not that much of a surprise. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Another kid thing that we should get out of the way before we get too much into it, because so you can watch something. Finishes. This is, like, this is like a second. Okay, okay. All right, okay, so, the, so the, the, the younger daughter uh, this week has been in a... Uh, 
a summer camp uh, where they're, um, what do you call it? It's, it's at the makery. It's a, it's a place where they make That's stuff. <laughs> and anyway, so, so her project for this week was to make a, mini, a miniature house, a tiny house, a model of a tiny house. So she's going to show that to us real quick. Because um, it has nothing to do with MREs, it has nothing to do with rations, but I'm very proud of her. She did a great job. Oh, well, oh, you want to slide? Oh, you can slide it over here if you want. Let's get this out of the way. And I promise, eventually, we are going to get to this MRE. You <clears throat> uh, know what I can do? Oh, boy. Um, why is that not working? Uh, you can start. You can start telling us about it. I'll, I'll just. I'll just put it up. I guess. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know what to say. Um, just... So this is my house that I made. And then the roof comes off, and, oh, okay. This is just, um, and then the inside, there's like a living room, kitchen, and um, dining room, and then there's the bedroom up here. Mm -hmm. And you can take this thing off. Oh, jeez. And then the bathroom. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then over here is the <clears throat> pool. And one of the things I like, about, I mean, I like everything about this, but one of the things I think is really cool is that, well, I thought it was cool that they, they use this trash bag to make water in the pool, because originally she wasn't going to put water in it, she told me yesterday. And the thing I, that's kind of cool for me, and um, Golden Eagle will appreciate this too, um, my mom actually gave us a bag of straws when the girls were little. And we still have most of them. I, I, I'm such a cheapskate that I reuse things over and over, and I actually wash the straws, which I guess is better for the turtles because, you know, we're not supposed to be using plastic straws. So um, I'll wash them and reuse them over and over. So we still have a number left. And she brought a bunch with her. And these little pool floaties are made from the straws from my mom, who passed away last year. So it's kind of like a, you know, just like a nice little touch. But I really thought this was really, really cool, and she did a great job. So I know it has nothing to do with um, rations, but... I hope nobody minds, you know, we, we may be showing some guinea pigs and right now we're looking at a little model of a tiny house. It kind of reminds me of the Brady Bunch too. It reminds me of uh, Mike Brady because he was an architect and he would make little some models and stuff. Pool is, pool is their favorite. Love the wood floors. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. auntie. Love the loft bedroom. Career in architecture awaits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, baby. Adorable. Good job. All right. Thank you, Slidey. Magnus says, cool house is amazing. In Sweden, we call them Alter Falchus, and they can be built on your land or garden. Oh, that's cool. Without a permit. Wow. Oh, without a permit. This, wow. We're heading to Sweden. Ooh. We were supposed to head to Sweden last year, before the uh, lockdown. Zeno Saga, Saga says hi. Hello, Zeno. Welcome. And let me get this back where it was, so you don't see all the extra stuff. Um, and one more sip of this. Thank you, Slight. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, we were talking about the ham and chicken loaf. <clears throat> and this, I guess this was when they, they had already started having the uh, truth in advertising with, uh, look at that ingredient list. It's like it should be ham and chicken, maybe a couple other things, but it's just, there's a lot of stuff in there. Cracker meal, chicken broth. Um, so this is five ounces. This is a couple years before they started using the uh, eight ounce entrees. So the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, main and the side are in the same size little blocks. I'm kind of hoping I can open this up without destroying it. And interestingly, there's no date code on here. Usually the components will have date codes. Oh, well, you know what? This is actually stamped in here. It's actually not printed. Uh, hold on one second. Um, six, yes, six one 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 C. So you can't, I don't think, you might be able to see that. This way, I mean, they usually seem to be printed, but um, well, these are stamped for some reason. So anyway, uh, so this was uh, packaged on the 111th day of 1986. And uh, one of the fun things I was thinking of doing later on, if we have time, is uh, is throwing out the question, what were you doing in 1986? Oh, uh, when this thing was new, um, <clears throat> there was something I was thinking of. Shoot, it was a, it was a world event. Uh, anyway, um, 1986, I was in the uh, 11th grade. <clears throat> or this would be the summer. Uh, between my 11th and 12th grades, which I also probably shouldn't admit because it shows I'm old, but mm -hmm. then I wasn't. I was young in the, back then, and, and this ham and chicken loaf was around. 
So we have the ham and chicken loaf, and we have uh, what on the on the uh, outer bag is called bean component. And here it is called beans with tomato sauce. Uh, a little bit more of a modest ingredient list: beans, water, tomato paste, sugar, corn oil, blah blah blah, a few other things. Um, packed by Shelf Stable Foods Incorporated, Evansville, Indiana. I wonder if Shelf Stable Foods became. Um, what is the, the the company? One of the three companies is uh, is in Evansville, or used to be at least. <clears throat> and the ham and chicken loaf is actually distributed by Del Monte Frozen Foods. That is really kind of cool because Del Monte is uh, a, you know a very well known. Um, company that made uh that did i think they did a lot of canned stuff didn't they but they, they're actually saying del monte frozen foods so it's funny that this isn't a frozen food but whatever we have a couple interesting um companies there and this one has a, a challenging date code too this one is wow is that a six it looks like the 142nd day no i'm not sure about that if this is a six i mean this is definitely from 1986 so there has to be a six on here somewhere it may be from the 142nd day of 1986, but there's an extra number here, a couple extra numbers, so this may not be the date code. And all the components didn't have date codes, so it is possible that it just doesn't have one. Here we have the crackers. There's nothing else on there, just crackers, and I don't think a date code. But the good thing about this is it has a very tight uh, That's what we want to see. We're hoping to get edible crackers out of this that aren't bleached out. That would be a wonderful thing. Um, I'm saving one of the best things for last. And this is accessory packet C, which is, isn't a surprise because it says it on there, but uh, uh, from what MRA Info says, I was expecting this to be A. So accessory pack C has coffee, cream substitute, sugar, candy, salt, chewing gum, matches, and paper toilet, paper comma toilet, which obviously is toilet paper from Right Away Foods. Uh, and this one is in really nice shape. It has just the slightest bit of delamination right here, right on the front. Um, just kind of where it's like crinkled up here. The top looks fine, maybe a little bit here and there, but not bad at all. So that's uh, also another good sign. And uh, we're gonna actually, I'm gonna try to, um, ooh, sorry, is that me? Try to give this a little slit too, without going all the way through. Emily's here too. Hello, Emily. Welcome. And anybody that we've forgotten, obviously everybody, welcome. I'll, let me see if we can give you a little shot of our guest. There's Milo. He's, uh, he's, he's getting ready to demand. Oh, you know what? I wonder if he's been hearing anything. Like, I don't really have anything crinkly, but... Mm. See if we can get his attention. Come here. I have an idea. Nah. Uh, the other ones. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, the uh, little one will... Um, I will try not to get on there. <laughs> She's actually trained him to go over to that little hammock over there to get his treats. And she's trained him to like make a little circle, which is funny because ours have not been able to be trained to do anything, but in one week Milo has uh, been trained to uh, go over to the hammock and to make a little circle to get his treats. Hello. Hello. Eh, these guys are too tired. So, thank you. Uh, as I was saying, oh yeah, we're gonna check out the, um, the accessory pack. Usually I would wait till the end for this, but there's something else in here that's kind of, oh, nice. So a lot of people didn't like the candies that were in these because this is before they started putting commercial candies in, but whenever I would get an MRE, I would always get the crappy ones. I would always get the ham and chicken loaf, which luckily I didn't mind, but I, I, I never seemed to get like the spaghetti and meat sauce and the beef stew. It was always this or the chicken a la king, which we called chicken a la the S word. Uh, or was that tuna back then? But whatever it was, it, it, this, it was they weren't that great. And um, the, the best ones, I, I never seemed to get them. But I always hoped to get an accessory pack that wasn't A because some of them, including C, had, um, had candy in them. And this was actually, this is probably my favorite candy, vanilla fudge. I love that. I love the, um, the uh, track pads, the uh, chocolate covered cookie bars. I, I love those things that like, I, I just I have a sweet tooth and I guess I just always have. So we have the vanilla fudge as the candy. It's been a little bit smushed, but it, you know we'll we'll see. I mean, I'm not expecting it to be edible. It's not in a a retort pouch, and it's 35 years old. But I, actually, I forgot to mention the smell of the accessory pack. That smells. It has a bit of a mustiness to it. It could be coming could be coming from this or just the, the paper packaging. But we also have the toilet paper. 
And we have the Coffee Instant Type 1. Which, what is that? Is that freeze dried or spray dried? I'm not really sure. I've never really. <laughs> Bless you. Seems I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, but this may actually be um, drinkable if uh, Mrs. G wants to try a little bit. Uh, and we have a uh, cream substitute, which yeah, that's, that feels like it's fine. It's not all like hard in there or anything like that. Uh, we have sugar, iodized salt, and the chewing gum, which the chewing gum actually is vacuum sealed. I've never seen that before. It's not a, a heavy seal, but it's definitely uh, got a little bit of a seal on it. That's kind of cool. And we have the matches. We have uh, white tip matches. And as I mentioned, the vanilla fudge, which uh, there is some smoke coming through there. Do you want to take away from that? Sure. It's not the greatest. And thanks to <laughs> Emily and Magnus. I don't know what, why I just said this. Maybe my body is like already having an allergic reaction to this whole situation. Mm, it could be. Hmm. The vanilla fudge. What is this supposed to be? It's a good band, too. Yeah. Uh, it's basically like, um, <clears throat> like, like a Tootsie Roll? It kind of feels mm, like that. It's I mean, more of a candy bar kind of thing from, from what I remember, but we'll, we'll, um, we'll definitely check it out. Mm. Uh, the little one is uh, interested in the, in the gum, which the, the gum should probably be fine, too. <clears throat> and this is uh, in the first few years, the MREs didn't have these, but they did put these in. Uh, it's just a pouch stand, uh, which later on you could kind of use the, uh, the boxes as, uh, as sort of stands. And uh, it's kind of, kind of a neat little addition. Uh, you push here to... Um, so the, the thing will stand up and then you can, you can put your retort pouch in there and eat out of it. I never used one. I, these, I don't think they were around when I was... Uh, oh, well, actually, no, they would have been. Oh, welcome, Smokey. We, um, uh, we're talking about you. I don't know if your ears are burning, but uh, I was mentioning your uh, smoke show tomorrow and how, um, as far as I know, it's going to be about no RP and uh, a vintage beer, maybe two. Uh, I'll let you follow up. And I, I did tell everybody that that's just what I heard is uh, no guarantees. Like, if they tune in tomorrow, I don't want anybody to complain and saying, oh, gee, Schultz said it was going to be an ORP, and it's not. And Richard T. from Vancouver. Welcome, Richard. Another friend from north of the border. So uh, one more regular thing in here. We have peanut butter. Actually, that's this, that's a good sign because um, the cheese spread that J.W. Speaker had was uh, not good. And there's no reason why the peanut butter shouldn't be good. And look at this. This is... um. A 35-year-old retort pouch of peanut butter, and it has absolutely no delamination. No, uh, I take that back. Uh, no, actually, that's just like a little bit of extra over here. Maybe just the slightest bit on this edge here. But uh, this looks to be in really, really nice shape. It'd almost be uh, something good to hold on to. And I can see the date code here. Um, I can't quite read it, but it's... Uh... Oh, that's weird. 23-4... Six. I guess that's not a date code. Um, as I said, I mean, there's no guarantee on these old ones if they're going to have on the components. But we, we definitely got a couple. We can, you know, even without knowing that it was from 1986, we can date it to 1986 from uh, between the uh, the uh, the bag and the menu, which uh, ham and chicken loaf was an original entree from the 1981 MREs, and it was around until 1987. And I'm glad Smokey's here because I did want to mention that um, there was seven years of the ham and chicken loaf. It's amazing it lasted that long. And it actually was replaced as menu number two by old Smokey's favorite MRE of all time, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, corned beef hash. So we have peanut butter, which may very well be edible. And uh, yeah, as I said, it's, it says like 23 here space four space six so i don't think that's a date code some kind of a uh, company code anyway and the crackers i think uh there was not a code on that and the beans and tomato sauce was difficult to tell so luckily the the entree had it because nothing else did and that's leaving us two things we have the white uh spoon this is before the brown spoons came around a few years later and I'm actually going to keep this one just because I don't have too many of these, and I like the fact that it's, it's still sealed. These are the um, spoons that were in the MCIs, the old C rations, and they just, probably the only thing, other than like, well, the matches and toilet paper, there's stuff in the, in the accessory pack. One of the few things that made it uh, and, and the, through the transition from MCI or C rations to uh, the MRE, and it was in there for a number of years before it was replaced by the superior brown MRE spoon. And because of the fact that I want to keep that one, we're going to use a brown emery spoon tonight for whatever we can eat. That leaves one last component, this one little, little block here. And this is a 
freeze-dried fruit. This is a special thing. This is a couple years before they phased out the freeze-dried elements, uh, which included a couple of entrees, the beef patty and the pork patty, and the freeze-dried fruit, which is, it's just, it's, it's a treat. It was actually a treat back then. I used to like eating these when I was in the service. I used to like eating them dry. You could reconstitute them, but it was kind of messy. But you can see this one has a nice, that has a really nice tight seal on it. So this, there's no reason why this won't be edible. If nothing else is, this will be edible. Probably the peanut butter, uh, hopefully some other stuff. And for the big reveal, it's the, it's the fruit mix, which was probably my favorite of the, uh, of the freeze-dried fruits. I'm not seeing uh, date code. No, wow. It barely made it on here, but it's, it's a printed one. 6100, so this is the 100th day of 1986. What would that be? Um, March? Uh, 30, 60, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. April. Yeah. This this probably came up. This is probably made in April. Uh, it's probably uh, packaged in April of 1986, at which point I would have been in the 11th grade, which I keep going back to. Um, and now we need a tray because we're going to start <clears throat> checking this out. This was a few years before the famous ration heater was introduced, and in, I think 19... 1994, 1993, 1993, I believe. Um, Smokey will will know better than I do. Um, I always forget some of those little details. But since there was no flame ration heater, we're not going to heat this up. We're just going to go ahead and uh, check it out. And I have, uh, this is a little bit before Desert Storm, but I do have my Desert Storm coffee mug, which um, we'll probably actually try to, try to do this. It has a Saddam on the front, and it has a... Uh, US M1 tank and a Soviet, I don't know if it's a T-62, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but it's a, a Soviet tank, it's Iraq. And we won't necessarily need the pouch, but uh, we will need the coffee, creamer, and sugar. And what should we start with? This is going to be the last one, because uh, one thing with these, these fruit mixes, and I do want to mention to anybody who's probably anybody that is aware of them already knows this, but if you happen to find yourself um, coming into possession of an old MRE fruit mix that's really well sealed, <clears throat> don't open it up and then let, let it sit around for a long time because the air will get to it. And just the air, and especially when it's sort of a muggy day, it'll, it'll start um, trying to reconstitute, trying to rehydrate, and it'll lose its crunchiness pretty quick. So we'll open that one last. But the peanut butter, we're going to give that a nice little knead. It does say knead package before opening. It's fortified one and a half ounces. And this is actually from Kern Foods Incorporated, California. But like I said, I think this is going to be edible. Oh, I should have had a, I should have had a pack of uh, MRE crackers handy in case these crackers aren't edible. But whatever. We gotta get going on this stuff, don't we? Because it's almost eight o'clock. I'm sorry, folks. We're almost an hour into this. I hope everyone's having fun in the chat. I'm not keeping track, but Mrs. G is. I'm sorry, is, I got distracted. Oh, Mrs. G is surfing the net. I. <laughs> <laughs> Week. I'm oh, sorry. okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, folks. Uh, uh, Lethal Wolf just said goodnight, everyone. I hope I didn't uh, put you to sleep. <laughs> um, I have not been keeping track of the. Oh, okay. Oh, <clears throat> let me get back to it. Oh, Gundog's here. Welcome, Gundog. Uh, I did want to say if uh, Gundog showed up, I did want to mention. Well, even if he didn't, I did want to mention to make sure everyone goes to Gundog's channel. Uh, most of the regular, uh, all the regulars here are very well aware of who Gundog is. Alika's here. And I'm very glad to uh, have him in the stream. Honored to have you here, yeah, Gundog. Aletha, I have said not local Aletha. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, now I'm like paranoid. Maybe she wasn't here. I don't know. Okay. If, if, but if not, I'll say hello again. Hello, Aletha. Let us check out the beans and tomato sauce. See if I can get this open without causing a lot of damage. And it's not glued in there, which is nice. Uh, wow, this is an interesting texture for a... There's nothing wrong. It's not delaminating. It's just a, an interesting, a different kind of texture. It's kind of cool. And what do we have on here? Uh, the printing is beans with tomato sauce, 6142. So there we have the, uh, the uh, date code that we were lacking before. Uh, and I think that was what I thought it was on here because it has extra numbers after it, but I'm pretty sure that's uh, the 142nd day. Uh, if Byron's still here, it's almost the 143rd day, but uh, the 142nd day of 1986. And it's kind of funny because it, it's actually legible here, but you can see the uh, the ink. It must have been 
I guess it was extra. It doesn't look like it came off of that, but um, yeah, some extra ink on there. So we have our bean component. Luckily, we're not taking a flight tonight because this is not supposed to be for in-flight or pre-flight use. But hopefully it'll be edible. That would be cool. And we have our ham and chicken loaf, the star of the evening. <clears throat> Karsten's here. Hello, Karsten. Seems like I thought I'd heard Karsten's name before. And that one also is not... Welcome, Yossi. This also is not glued in, which is nice. A lot of times these old, um, these small boxes, uh, the the retro pouches, for some reason, were glued on the inside to the box, which is, I've never understood. I don't know if anybody knows the reason for that. Oh, that's some cool looking printing. Look at that. This is more of a standard retort pouch than this one with the interesting interesting texture on it. Uh, 6111, just like on the box, the 111th day of, of 1986. Um, it says it twice. Ham, this is like the standard ham and chicken loaf. It's, it's funny, it says like a EST, is that like established? And then there's a bunch of numbers and then the 6111. It also says ham and chicken loaf, the same thing. It's printed twice. I don't really recall seeing that printing very often. I don't know how well you can see this, sorry. But, uh, yeah, I just want to check that out. And so we have this nice little square in here. That's the loaf. It's a funny word for it. I, don't, I mean, I don't know what else you could call it. But. Let us check that out first. What the heck? <clears throat> Usually when I'm doing the reviews, I do the entree last because it's been heated and I you know, want to be able to eat it before it cools off. <clears throat> it feels like we might be getting a little delamination. Nothing visible, but it, it's, it's kind of making sort of a strange sound. But let's see if it makes a strange smell. There we go. Okay, so... Oh yeah, there is some delamination. I have to say in my defense, you started asking about 1986 and that's when mm -hmm. I started. And I was like, did I see the Prince 1989 concert in 1986? No, dummy, because it was 1989. Mm. Anyway, so then I went on to find Turned out how much too, money they made at that concert. They had three shows. Prince? At the Centrum. Prince at the Centrum? Yeah. Um, anyway, it was amazing. Okay, I digress. So that's kind of where <clears> I went, and, and then I got and that was 1989? Or was it then? Yeah. Okay. It, it, it was like 1988 to 1989. I don't know if I knew you'd seen that. Huh? I don't know if I knew that you had seen that. What? 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 So we do have some issues here with the... Uh, Communication? This, uh, well, that too, but also oh. with this MRE. You can, you can actually <laughs> see the delamination where it's, uh, I mean, it's packed in juices, just like the, uh, just like our can of ham, a uh, can of pork. Readiness Rations is here. Hello, Readiness Rations. Welcome. Um, so, I don't know, it's kind of interesting, but uh, the smell test is uh, is definitely a success. It smells like memories you know it's like you know how like uh, a song can bring you back and a sound can bring you back um also a taste and a smell can mm -hmm. bring you back and this, what is this to me what this, is this to, to me this this smells like being in the back of an m901 itv and uh and it's lunchtime and you're out in the desert and you get this to eat ew <laughs> <laughs> Well, this, is a, this, is a genuine, this is a genuine reaction. <laughs> Would you like to take a whiff? You don't no. have to try this, but you might as well at least... Smell. It's not bad. It's not rancid. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's actually what it's supposed to... It smells to... good. Did you hear that, folks? <laughs> it does. It smells smoky and, and meaty. Mm -hmm. If I was in the middle of the desert... She said, I was not expecting that, but um, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, and you can try it if you want. I'm not, I'm not going to make anyone try this, but... Uh, I might try it. And we can see... We'll you, see. Uh, had... This is an interesting thing. Let's, let's start to... <laughs> I remember it. It's like I'm guessing it's more of the chicken is the loaf, and then the ham is inside of it because it it, it gives it like this texture. You know, because spam is a pretty smooth kind of thing. It's uh, it's got a certain denseness to it, so it almost feels like like an actual product as opposed to just something that could be a paste. Uh, but it's it's very smooth, and this. I remember it does have like this this texture to it where there's I guess the light stuff maybe is the ham and you can see some fat on there and let's put it onto the tray and it has some of its juices in there and I definitely have high hopes for this we will see but um, that is a prime a prime example and it's like going back in a in a time machine like I know that that sound that may that may be like you know saying too much but it's really pretty cool because MREs, people every day are reviewing 25, 30-year-old MREs, 
and it's something that you you can do, but they're not intended to last this long. You know, it's like somebody somebody will will open a twenty year old MRE, and and be like, oh, this is disgusting. I can't believe this. This is, this is like everything's rotten in here. It's no good. It was not meant to last that long. You know, it's only meant to last three to five years. That's what it's designed for, but it's it's kind of over overproduced, over uh, over engineered, and it can last a lot longer as we've seen. And if it's stored well, it can last. Not indefinitely, but it it almost seems like indefinitely. I mean, this is this is meat that's thirty five years old, and what the heck? And it may still be edible. To me, that's that's a pretty amazing thing. I know we're we're used to this kind of stuff, and it doesn't really seem like that. But but I mean, how often? Even if you have something that's canned, like how often do you have something that lasts that long? Dubsy says it is crazy how long. The, the, the last and it's true I mean it's oh, bless you oh boy. wow we get everybody sneezing are you allergic to ham and chicken loaf you just sneezed in my clean hair I know mm, it's, it's not awesome. clean anymore Ew. now let's see if we're how the luck our luck holds out with the uh, the beans and the first thing I'll say before I even smell it is this this retour pouch with this um this interesting texture is also staying together much better if it, it feels like one layer even though you know it's a bunch of layers of uh metal in plastic that's what it should look like you know and, and this one you can see that the uh the plastic here is separating if i'm not in the way here uh separating from the metal which is you know it's not great but i mean it's been sitting in liquid for 35 years so it's it's kind of done its job no can you bring me a, a hit towel thank you um sorry i just uh touched the juices and i not not tasting it yet, so I had to like put that off. Um, I I'm should trying already... this new uh, wine oh. I got. Oh yeah, bring out the bottle. Uh, bring out the bottle and bring me another beer. <laughs> oh lord! Oh, lord. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound like that, but I, I realized when I told you when I asked you to get the oh, uh, like the paper towel that I probably should have asked for another beer too. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you. All right, here's the here's the bottle. But... Yeah, anytime. Caesar. Oh yeah, can you bring that over slightly? Ah. So, yeah, Mrs. G has a new, well, she doesn't have a new, she's trying a new thing. Could this be oh, it's a spritzer. By, is, is, is this, this be sponsored by Line 39? Is this considered a, um, uh, a seltzer thing? Yeah. Okay. Well, mm, this, no. It says but sparkling water. Oh. Maybe. Oh, oh, you know what? I don't it's usually do this, but, ingredients, but the little one just actually suggested this. She didn't mean Whatever. to. She didn't mean to suggest it, but she did by mistake. <laughs> so, oh, it's 5%. in honor of 1975 and um, and Jaws and Quint and Narragansett, I'm gonna crush it like Quint. That was a really bad. Okay. You beast. <laughs> or cereal. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's crushed. Anyway. Yeah, but kids at school go like. Oh well. No, if I stepped on it, nobody could see it. I had to do it, you know, the way Quint did it, which yeah. is, you know, he. I kind of did it in front of uh, Richard Dreyfus, and then just kind of downed it and crushed it. Piggy just hopped. Oh, I thought that was the wrong pig. Okay, where was I? We were at the bean component, and uh, boy, am I dragging this out, aren't I? Yes. Metal Man for weed. Yeah, you can't really say that, sorry, but the... Um... All right, Metal Man, I'm glad you're not here, but welcome anyway. <laughs> Curious Pete everybody's mentioned fried bologna. Is, oh, is that what somebody's having fried bologna? Yeah, everybody's making um, dinner. Getting anybody, hungry. anybody who's uh, seen the uh, Instagram page for Gisel Signs knows that I, uh, I'm not, I'm not um, adverse to fried bologna. But uh, the beans are looking okay. I, like I can't what really get a good. We're talking, about? we're talking about beans and tomato sauce. Okay. And they smell Tomato-y? very good. Really? For uh, they smell like what they're supposed to smell like. <clears throat> for MRE beans and tomato sauce, they smell like beans and tomato sauce. I have a feeling that this stuff may actually be this, edible. It smells. What was I? What I smelled out of that was like clove, like spices, like delicious. Well, like you, you, yeah, you're even getting the extra stuff. I mean, yeah. basically, to me, I'm smelling the tomatoes, but you're getting, you're getting even beyond that. I know. I know. That's why you can keep me around. Yeah, you know. One of the things I was going to talk about tonight was uh, Blue Apron. I don't know if anybody's used that, but we've been 
using Blue Apron lately, and I was going to mention that uh, we started using it earlier this summer, and I was not aware that we were going to start using it until Mrs. G told me to go downstairs and get a, a package, this big box with, like, food and ice in it and stuff, and that was how I found out we were, we were getting Blue Apron. So that shows who is the boss in this house. Doesn't. <laughs> or at least the person who orders I stuff know. and doesn't tell somebody. This <laughs> says who gave up. Beans, water, tomato paste, sugar, corn oil, modified flour starch, salt, onion powder, spices, and garlic powder. See? I think in the spices, that's where you're getting... Ah. What did you pick up on? What was it? Clove. Clove. Yeah, mostly you just get in the tomatoes, but, you know, that's... Would you be able to smell clove? Like, could you identify uh, That's it a good a... question. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, I guess we're, uh, we're up to the uh, crackers, and this is a uh, cross-your-fingers moment. Oh, that's some delamination. No, that's just a little white thing on there. Because it has a great seal, but that doesn't mean anything when you're getting this old. So let's do the Steve 1989 thing and see if we hear a hiss. I did hear it. It wasn't very loud, but I did hear it. And you definitely got the release as the air rushed in. And that comes the moment of truth. I'm smelling those beans, and it's not smelling bad at all. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, you know, once this gets, once they start tasting this, it, it could be metallic and disgusting, but this is pretty cool. This is really like a little time machine going on here. And let's see how this chapter goes. They look fine, as you would expect. Oh, and they smell perfect. Could be a little stale, but I'd rather have stale than bleach. Oh boy! A um, little different reaction, but they, it it could be a lot worse, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. For years, I remember when people first started doing doing reviews and and they were getting bleached out uh, crackers. I was like, "What the hell does that mean? Like, there's no bleach in it. How can it smell like bleach?" And and I never got them. I I would have these ones from like the '90s, the '80s. And they always were just perfect. And then finally, I got one that was bleached out. I'm like, I see what you're talking about. Those are disgusting. Ooh, and we have something special tonight. I hope these are edible. Because these folks, you, I'm sure you can't see it, but these are the salted ones. Is that the special thing? This, this smells like when my, when my brother brought me home an MRE from, in 1981, one of my favorite things was the crackers. And, and what makes these... Uh, I'm talking about crackers being special, and I, I, I get that that's funny. That's not real, but I love the fact that they used to have the little dotted lines going all the way through. Nowadays, it's just, it's just this part right here, and you can only kind of see it. Like, it's what they do have, these little two little things here. And you can never crack them. You can never turn them into four little crackers because it's like it's got these little things, but then you crack it, and it's like, you know, like, like this and everything. But um, this is like, I almost don't want to crack this, but obviously... All it's going to do now is get stale. It's been sitting in there 35 years. 1986. What was the big thing in 1986? Um, the uh, the uh, Challenger disaster. That was in 1986, wasn't it? It was in like, January 1986. Um, something else I was thinking about, too. Uh, and it's just like, like the stuff, this, this historical events that happened, and this stuff was sitting in this retort pouch way back then, and it still is. And as I said, I'm sorry I'm getting all excited about crackers, but um, this you can feel the salt on it, which is something you don't get nowadays. And even around this time, it seemed like they had stopped doing that. I'm going to... This one has a little corner cracked off, and we can try that. I guess I'm going to start the taste test, because uh, I, I do need to try this. Uh, anytime you want to um, heat up the water, okay. and we'll do the coffee. Okay. But I'm going to give this a taste, because I'm really hoping that this is edible. And I know I'm getting way too excited over crackers, but... It tastes, so, it tastes like a cracker. So your brother, finish what you were going to say. So yeah, brother, so my brother brought me home an MRE. He was in the and, Marines. And right? I don't remember what the entree was. He was in the Marines. And like I said, it was it bridged the time. This is probably good to review for anybody who's come along since the beginning of the thing, now that we're an hour, ten minutes in. And um, he had told me that the MREs were replacing the MCIs, or the C-rations, which I, I didn't know what C-rations were, because I used to get C-ration components and a couple C-rations at like yard sales and that. Army Navy stores and things like that. <clears throat> but obviously I had never had an MRE because they didn't exist before. And um, 
So he gave me one, and I, I don't even remember what the entree was. I wish I did. Like, like I didn't know that's something I would be, I would be 30, 40 years, 40 years later that I would be reviewing on, on YouTube. Um, it could have been this one, even. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's really hard to tell. <clears throat> but the one thing I do remember from it was the crackers. And I remember that smell. When I opened that up and took a whiff and was hoping it wasn't going to be all bleachy, it just smelled like 1981 to me. You know, it's like... It just really kind of takes you back. Um, otherwise, this it's, it's really takes me back to 1987, 1988, 1989 when I was in the Army. But, um, I don't know, pretty cool. Uh, the last thing, well, there's a couple more things we have to do. We, have, we still have the, uh, the peanut butter, which we can actually put on the crackers. Uh, but let me get the Coffee Instant Type 1 in the Saddam mug. And I'm expecting that to be fine. And it looks fine. Oh, you do have a produce situation. We, we talk about the kale, and I got to tell you, Mrs. G signed us up for this. Uh, you know, they have those meat share things. We, we we did that once before, I think. And you just you just end up with way, way too much meat. She did one of those for a farm. It was a farm share thing, and we get these every week. We get this giant. I can't even. My hands are like way out here. It's this giant box of all these vegetables. Uh, just greens and vegetables, and you know, it, I can, it, it, it may I have kale, we, much, more so. radishes than you could ever eat, and just like all this stuff. And <laughs> luckily, we are sharing it with some friends who yeah. I don't think they're watching tonight. But um, <laughs> uh, I hope I hope they're having a lot of fun with it because it's just it's just our refrigerator. It just it, it feels like we're like like overflowing with like an abundance of food because it's just jam stuff full Same. of uh, all these veggies. If we don't see your MREs because they're behind closed doors, but. Yeah. yeah, my veg is like <laughs> out of control. Everywhere. Here is the um, coffee instant type one. That's not. That's not fine. Yep. Yeah. I will. I will try this, and I'm, I'm hoping Mrs. G will too. If 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 the uh, I mean the sugar's gonna be fine, but if the uh, uh, creamer's is fine, actually I'll I'll try the I'll smell the creamer first. Chris is here. Our mm -hmm. Chris. Chris Reedy. Oh, Chris Reedy. Welcome, Chris. I was thinking it was Chris uh, uh, Farm Share, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be hoping he wouldn't be cursing us. Gundog says, so your, so your meat share is full of vegetables? It's, uh, it's a not a meat share. share. I was just saying, like, I, I thought people might be able to relate more to meat shares because we, because I can see doing a meat share, but I don't know. It's just me, but I can't really see doing a veggie share. But anyway, we are. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to leave this black because I know that's how you drink your coffee. Uh, but I'm going to keep the sugar and the cream substitute nearby. And um, I thought that was a day code, but... No, it's not. Actually, I think it is a date code. It looks like there's a date code on the, the creamer. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, it's 5033. So it would have been um, the, uh, what would that be, February 2nd of um, 1985. Oh, cool dude is here. That's cool. His wife just had a baby, too. Hey, welcome, cool dude, and congratulations. Boy or girl? Aww. Either way, congratulations. I hear some... Okay. You know, I am going to check this out, though, because uh, actually, I should have saved that because it's cool that it's got the date code and everything. But I think this is fine. Yeah, that is. I should just put that in there. No, you know what? That smells weird. This is the first the first thing that was uh, an unexpected thing. You may fill up. I'm glad I didn't put that in there coffee. because... Uh, yes, yeah, I wouldn't go too, I wouldn't go too much. Um, yeah. A few ounces. <clears throat> we'll have it, try to keep it, like, on this the strong side. This is my new electric tea kettle. Yeah, it's... Show that. Summertime situation. What, like a third or half? Yeah, maybe just a couple of my drops. That's, I think that's good. I don't want to go do, you know, I want to make sure you can you taste it. What? Slight? Sorry. <laughs> I think this is going to be just fine. And I don't think that the uh, creamer is, which is sort of a weird thing. I mean, I know they can go bad, but I haven't really seen that happen too often. Uh, and you know what, I, I guess we, we were supposed to fill it up more so you could see Saddam. So basically, since we only filled it up this much, this won't really work. But Saddam uh, is in the middle of uh, Iraq. He's near, near Baghdad. And as the hot water goes in and, and heats it up, Saddam disappears and the oil rig, the oil tower, <laughs> appears. <laughs> so that's on one side. And on the other side, you have the U.S. Uh, M1 tank and then the Russian tank disappears. It's, it's actually kind of cool because it's actually... Uh, Desert Shield on this side, August 7th, 1990, and on this side is Desert Storm, January 17th, 1991. 
So it's a, it's a pretty cool mug. But uh, you want to try this? I do. I will too, but I won't get as much out of it as oh, you will. Yeah, it's that very electric kettle works well. It's very impressive. Uh, peanut butter. This is this is pretty exciting. I, uh, this is even longer than a regular G-Shells 9 review, but this is really worth it because this is really cool stuff. Curious Pete said electric kettles are like... Yes, I'm just I'm just yeah. warming to that idea. Haha, <laughs> get it? Warming? Yeah, oh, I like good it. Good one, good one, Mrs. G. And uh, it does have the tear arches, but I'm just going to give it a little... The coffee's good. I get a thumbs up. Wow, look at that, Mrs. G starting off the review. I did have that little corn of the cracker, but I'm basically... I'm glad I didn't add more water to that. Uh, I will try to, but I have to let it cool down a little bit. I don't really drink hot stuff. Um... And interestingly enough, that's the only beverage in this one. There's no lemon lime beverage or orange beverage or anything like that. It's just the uh, just the coffee. So that's why you have to supply your own. In the army, you'd probably have a canteen of water. Here, I have a 1975 can of Narragansett, brand new can, 1975 style. Just so we don't think we're watching the uh, smoke show on Saturday. With an actual 1975 Narragansett, <clears throat> that would probably have chunks in it. All right, so. Let's put some peanut butter on the uh, crackers, and then we will we will get going. <clears throat> and I don't know, Mrs. G, if you're willing, mm -hmm. yes. most of the stuff I think is going to be edible. I think that it smells good. It smells like it. The peanut butter, not too surprisingly, looks just fine. Uh, I hope that's not blurry. It's a little on the uh, runny. I probably could have needed a little bit more, but <clears throat> there's no need to knead any more than that. Let me um, let me demonstrate. Of course, this won't work, but basically these old uh, first-generation crackers with the salt, which, like I said, I, I wish I had this in HD so you could you could actually see it. I don't know. Maybe you can. But either way, you know, hopefully you'll take my word for it. You can you can actually feel the salt on there. Oh, it did not go as I had hoped, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, it's it's tough going. Riddle. Not a big deal. And let me actually give this a little try. It smells fine. Just a creamy peanut butter. Um, it's got a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a grittiness to it, like the you know, like a the not not a hundred hundred percent uh, ground up. So you get a, it's not chunky, but you get a little bit of the uh, the the peanuts in there, and it tastes just fine. It was just a very little bit, so I don't even know if I had enough to tell if it's going to, like, coat the sides of my mouth or anything like that. <clears throat> but now we are going to have the moment of truth, and uh, I guess we're going to finish up with a review. Um, Magnus is heading out. Oh, Magnus, just as, just as we're getting to the good stuff. I'm sorry. I, I really apologize, everyone. I know a, a review should not take an hour and 15 minutes to really get to the, uh, the main and everything, but... Uh, Magnus, hopefully you'll be able to come back and uh, check out the replay and see see how this stuff went. I mean, this could this could still be a disaster, but here we have the ham and chicken loaf. Thanks for being here, Magnus. I, I realize it's, uh, what is it now, like 3 o'clock? Something like that over in Sweden, 3.15, 3.20. Uh, I appreciate you showing up and being here, being here early, even waiting. And, um, yeah, it's it's tough to, to have a live stream and know the time that's going to work for everybody. You know, I know it's Friday night. I metal metal man. Thank you for being here. I think I don't know if I saw you before. Uh, Viper is uh, Viper here? I didn't I didn't see Viper showing up. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, it's it's tough. I, I then Friday night. I, I realize people are gonna have things going on. We started doing this during the during the lockdown, and I've kind of figured, well, people probably aren't gonna be able to go out anyway on Friday night. So why don't we why don't we do this and give people an option to do something? Uh, Seven o'clock to me. You can do this from 7 to 9, and then you can go out if you're going to go out on a Friday night. But, of course, other places in the world, it's not 7 o'clock. It's 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. So, Richard T., eat it already. Uh, let's try it out. I was sorry. I was trying to show the uh, <laughs> the um, the textures. You can kind of see in here, you get, um, it's, it's like a piece of ham sitting in this in this thing. It's just like resting in here in the loaf itself, and there's some darker bits uh, I need better lighting for this, but, um, yeah, you can see that, like, dark piece of ham over here. Uh, it's just, it's an interesting little conglomeration of meats and stuff. <clears throat> but I just, um, uh, lick my fingers and it seems like it's okay. 
So oh it's happening, folks. The big moment. There's some ham and chicken loaf, and this would be an astounding moment because it would be the first time I, I tasted this since I was in the army, except for three years ago when Steve sent me that one. And that was really cool. Yeah, that um, it tastes like a ham and chicken loaf. Yeah, you know that's nothing necessarily to write home about, but it's better than it's better than tasting like metal. It's better than being rancid. Um, I'm trying to go slow with it, but uh, so far not seeing, hearing, not hearing, not seeing or smelling or seeing or tasting any uh, any warning signs, except for this weird sort of gray thing on the top here, but I think it's just because of the ham, where it's at. So, uh, the ham and chicken loaf seems to be just fine. Would you like to try a little bit? Yeah. Mrs. Sure. Jim? I mean, we have to be careful because, like, if both of us end up in the hospital, that's not <laughs> not a good thing for the that's for the kids. True. But I'm gonna give you a very small bit. Let me try a little bit more before I do. Just because uh, this is just a really fun little trip back in time. <laughs> and this is one of the ones I'm sure it was like a kind of a polarizing one. I'm sure some people liked it, and I'm sure the majority of people hated it. I mean, it's. Compared to like spaghetti and meat sauce, like look at this thing. It's <laughs> what what is it, you know? But um, I mean, it's kind of what I thought of when I thought of rations, like what a ration would be. I'm trying to think of my lips seem like they get, might be getting a little bit of a sensation on them, but nothing in the mouth, nothing down in the throat. <laughs> Somebody said cops are coming. It's possible. Oh yeah, the ration, yeah, the ration rolling police. In in force. <laughs> <laughs> they just knew. That's what you were doing earlier. You were uh, you're uh, alerting the uh, the authorities. <laughs> Carson said, "Mrs. G. Schultz wants an Orvi on that mm -hmm. case." <laughs> That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is kind of amazing. I, I don't know uh, um, the stuff that uh, J. W. Speaker had. Um, there was definitely some issues. I mean, if anything is going to go bad in this, it should be. It really should be these. <clears throat> but uh, that's really good. Really good? Uh, considering what it is, I mean, it, it, it's yeah. really it's really in good condition. It's really uh, it's really held up well. It, I wouldn't say it is really good. Cam says, "Hey, Taylor." Cheers. Hello, Cam. Taylor. Hello, Cam. All right, here goes. Thank you for giving me a little tiny little portion. It's smoky, uh, it actually looks good to me for some reason. Uh, you know why? Because it is. Uh, and if anybody would appreciate it, it's you, Smoky. I mean, this is. Is, is not the greatest food in the world, but this is, um, can I actually, um, I can zoom in. I don't know if I could or not. Um, <clears throat> I mean, this is a little piece of history. This is like something, this is like Ration Museum and old smoky kind of quality stuff. Cause this is, <laughs> this is a 35 year old, not a piece of meat, but a 35 year old loaf of meat. Oh, and we have a- Taylor, thank, thank you. Thank you, Taylor, we have a super chat. <laughs> like something, something is funny about it. Too much chunky beer to say it tastes good. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't mind chunky loaves. What? How is there more on the spoon than when I gave it to you? Did you try it or did you just okay. break it up? <laughs> I chewed it and I put it back on the spoon. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's just, it's... <laughs> I didn't mean you to show that. <laughs> I'm like, I gave you a little corner I and then it came back and it's like, that's I more could. than I gave you. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I, I that's could. totally fine. The it's... flavor was good. I just, I just. Yeah, I, I'm impressed that you you gave it a gave it a whirl. I didn't necessarily expect you to, but Smokey, yeah, yeah, this, this, you should be thinking this looks good because it does. It looks good and it tastes good. It's, it's, it's weird. It's amazing. Uh, uh, it's Latanya, a little trip back in time. R and I says hi. Used Hello, Latanya. When, when they were 14 years ago. Hmm. 14 years. 14. Oh my God. 14 years. 14 years. Cam, thank you. Oh, another super chat. Thank you, Cam. And then STEM at home. I think that's Laura. Um... What, what flavor that? are the beans in? It's like a tomato sauce, right? It's a little, James. It's a little emoji Hi, thing. James. Oh, it's, oh, it's a high five. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Cam. Cute. Appreciate it. Um, what yeah, so, I'm, I'm sorry if people have been stemming home. I'm sorry if people have been asking questions. I haven't been seeing them, and Mrs. G's been otherwise. Uh, yeah, the the beans are in tomato sauce. Uh, on the on the um, the bag, it just says bean component. So I had kind of forgotten. I, I forget that that's what it always is. It's always beans and tomato sauce. But that's what we're doing next. So um, thank you for asking. Um, let me clean up the spoon a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gave you my chewed up food. It's like a <laughs> it was weird. It's like, like a, a it's, it's, it's funny. I gave you this little corner. 
and then we're talking and this and the other thing and then the, the spoon comes back and there's more on it than what I gave you I'm like what the heck so here's the bean component also known as uh, beans and tomato sauce which Mrs. G smelt a little uh, she senses a little a little clover in there I'm sure I'm getting that too I just don't realize what it's called but uh, definitely definitely a tomato sauce kind of thing not doesn't smell like tomatoes because tomatoes don't really smell like too much but um, it does smell like a tomato sauce with little spices and everything and it smells fine. <clears throat> I'm hoping to continue the luck we've had with the, the ham and chicken loaf. And who was it who said, uh, eat it already? Had one bean. Consistency is fine. It still has a, you know, it, it's soft because they're, you know, they're, they're always soft, but it's, uh, it's not all mushy or anything like that. The beans are still individual. And some of the tomato sauce, it probably would be better heated, but this is how we had to eat it back then, unless you put it like on an engine block or something, left it in the sun or whatever. But um, nothing, nothing with this either. This smells fine. Uh, it, it appears fine, and it tastes fine. Oh, Marilyn's back. There's been welcome back, Marilyn. Uh, there's been uh, old MREs that I've eaten or that I've tried, and I remember saying like, "Oh yeah, it, it tastes fine," and then. Then you get this like that. Well, there is that sort of metallic aftertaste, and and then you kind of regret even trying it. <clears throat> but um, it's been a, a few minutes since we tried the, or since I tried the ham and chicken loaf, and Mrs. G regurgitated hers. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's it's it makes sense. I, I I would rather have that than later on you cursing me out because you didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. But um, no ill effects, no after effects. And there's a nice. Um, a nice good sized spoonful. Um, I will I will give you the option of. Uh, I'll try the beans. <laughs> no. Sure. You did you did try the ham yeah, and chicken loaf. You did. just didn't. Uh, legit, legit. Here's uh, like five right. or six beans for you. That's like my favorite thing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's funny. It doesn't say what beans that. What, what what beans would you say those are? Uh, uh, it's funny because nowadays they would tell you. They would it would say what the beans are. Here's his beans, water, tomato, tomato paste. They're too small to be kidney. Mm -hmm. Could be pinto that's like lost its color or a red bean. I'm not really sure. These are good. And uh, this is one thing I was going to say too is when I do um, eat uh, vintage rations, I will usually try them. Um, one of the things about Old Smokey and, and uh, Steve is uh, when they get them in there and they're somewhat mm -hmm. edible, they'll eat the whole thing. And that's very impressive. It's never really been my game. I mean, I, I, I really don't want to get sick. And I just, you know, I'm very interested in this stuff. It's, mm. it's, it's been a great hobby. It's delicious. It's a um, clean spoon club. Would you like more? Probably not. Not right at the second. No. It, wasn't, it wasn't an immediate one, was it? Um, Kaylin said, said they're probably small red bean, which I would agree with. Yeah, there you go. Probably and now I will try the two together. And uh, it's funny, it's like, not even being careful anymore. It's just like eating it like a regular food. And then you, you, you forget. You're like, you suddenly have to remember, like, 35 years old. This is older than a lot of people who are probably watching this video right now. Uh, that was a nice little break right on right on the line. It's the little <clears> things. And these do, uh, the uh, these loafs do go good. Uh, oh, you're having more? On the, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going for it now. Yeah, more. Um... One thing that's interesting, the, ver the first generation of MREs, the first uh, 1981 through 1985 are, are listed the, the same on MRE Info. And menu number two through 1987 was the ham and chicken loaf. But in that very first 81 through 85, there was a 12B, and that was a chicken loaf. I don't think I ever got that. It was, it was kind of like a, probably more of a rare kind of thing, but uh, I, at least I don't remember. <clears throat> but that obviously would be similar to this, but just without the ham. Duh. I mean, that's <laughs> obvious, but that would be a cool one to see. If somebody... I wonder if anybody has one of those. Let's, uh, this does have a little bit of a weird coloration here, but I think it's just because it's the natural ham thing that isn't overly processed. I, I'm not saying this isn't overly processed, but those little chunks of ham that are in there, you can definitely see that it's actually ham. That was weird. I just realized I got... I 
I did that without fully checking out the cracker. <laughs> I had that little corner, but I never actually had more. So um, here's the test of the cracker, which we pretty much already uh, decided is fine. And that's really good. And the salt's on there. Obviously, the salt in all MRE crackers, but uh, it's just nice to have it be like a saltine. Mrs. G, are you going to try the um, peanut butter and crackers? Yes. All right. Uh, and I can't tell you how great it is that these crackers are are boring. They they smell like a boring cracker. You know, it's like... Well, they smell like bleach. And not only, like, boring... They don't they, smell they like bleach. They don't smell it? like bleach? You think they smell like bleach? When you opened the package, I thought they smelled like bleach. Oh, am I, like... Not getting Didn't it? Didn't it smell, like, hmm. not great when you first opened it? Am I crazy? I think it that? smelled... No, it, to me, it, to me it's, it smelled... It smelled part, perfect. It smelled like crackers, and it, it just brought me back to 1981. Oh, okay. You know, the first time. Okay. Hmm. Uh, well, now I'm a little bit concerned that maybe my smell is off and I'm eating bad stuff. Give that another whiff. And obviously, I don't expect it to smell like anything wonderful. No, it's just, I mean, just it doesn't a cracker. smell like bleach. I mean, in the plastic, it... Uh, I've, I've had the bleach ones before, and I've never been able to even eat them. If I had anything, I had, like, Taylor a nibble. Said, uh oh COVID. And now I'm eating... Like half of one of these, one of these, one of these blocks. So it, I think it's okay. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's not I mean, COVID. Yeah, and... no. I mean, I guess I should try the. the I'd be more concerned with the, the meat. The peanut butter first. And the peanut butter tastes fine. You know, it's it's as long as there's nothing wrong with the packaging, it should be fine. And it does seem to be. So now I will try the two together. Yeah, it's just peanut butter on a cracker. Nothing special about that, but when you're talking about 35-year-old peanut butter and 35-year-old cracker, for it to taste like that, that's a pretty amazing thing. That's cool. All right, I'll try some. Hmm. The peanut butter looks really. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a repeat, but it's it's actually. Um, mm. Sometimes it's very very oh solid. God. Sometimes it's very very runny. This is. Well, somewhere in the middle. It's not. Pretty close to perfect. Yeah. I mean, we're thirty five years old. Mm. Oh wow, that cracker leaves. Mm. Hmm. That's weird. I'm not picking that up. Mm. No, but it's definitely it's a salted cracker. That's cool. Yeah, I know, and that doesn't sound very exciting either, but they it wasn't no. probably too long after this they stopped putting the, the salt on the cracker. I think it was, like, in the cracker meal or something, and so it's, like, part of it. But for some reason, I always miss that. And it seems like I remember it even being bigger crystals, <clears throat> like, that you could actually really, really see them on there, but I'm it's probably just imagining that. <clears throat> but you can see that in real life, IRL. So that's cool. Um... Everybody knows I'm not a coffee drinker, but I'm gonna have to watch this in the replay to get all the uh, all the uh, chat action. But mm -hmm. then it's gonna be like, oh, I can't answer them. It's like, are you guys gonna yeah. feed them? Oh, okay. Oh. All right. You might hear some noises pretty soon. I'm hoping they will. These guinea pigs are really kind of chilling, but. Okay, ready? Mm hmm. It's a nice little interlude in the coffee. Uh, coffee does seem to be fine. Squeak, squeakle. This is the creamer. I'm gonna just take a whiff of that. It, I don't think that there's something wrong with that. I'm oh, sorry, slightly. There is something wrong with that. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it kind of smells musty, which doesn't necessarily yeah. mean bad. But, but considering everything else in this has been perfectly fine. <laughs> Museum said farming Peruvian MREs. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it could that could be said. It could be said like um, uh, emergency <laughs> emergency food, but uh, it wouldn't be very nice. Oh, look at, look at, 
Hey, happy guys. <laughs> Joe, we didn't bring them up on the table, but there you can see them. We have... Uh -huh. <clears throat> We've got uh, Samoa, Coco, and um, Milo, who I call Milo and Otis, for anybody that remembers the movie. And they're very happy right now because they're getting kale. Although Milo, is, Milo doesn't like kale. He doesn't like kale and he doesn't like carrots, we've discovered. I'm sure he will eat them if he really, really has to, but it's not his thang, as it were. Thang. Thang. You're not the one that hates thang. Thang. I hope I didn't just turn the stream off there. I don't think so. Uh, Curtis, you uh, you don't want to try any of this summary, do you? No, I know mean, it, it was discussed before, but <clears throat> we still. What the heck? I threw lettuce at them. Throw her. Oh Flick. Oh boy, somebody's popcorn. Um. So here's the the uh, vanilla fudge, not to be confused with the band vanilla fudge. Uh, this does seem to have a little bit of a, a smell that doesn't smell exactly right. So I, I wouldn't expect it to be edible, but it's just been amazing. Like this, this. This and this have all been uh, <laughs> really good. John Petruna says, they get romaine lettuce. I've never even been to Italy. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, Here's the moment of truth. Like I said, when I was in, I, I used to love to get these little snack things, you know. Okay, this obviously, this is the first thing that's betraying any kind of... Uh, storage issues it obviously encountered some heat along the way but um doesn't necessarily look all that bad there isn't even a lot of um oxygen blooming on this is a little bit a little bit discolored on this side uh it's a little bit melty there's a little bit of white on the bottom here which um hmm. i don't know i'm guessing that's uh Blooming. I'm hoping that's what it is. It looks a little bit like mold, but uh, I don't think it's gonna be edible. But we'll. And is the uh, this is the vanilla fudge? <clears throat> if this was fresh, I would have loved to have gotten one of these in the '80s. Um, I'm hoping I'm not gonna regret trying this. I'm not gonna have anybody else try this because uh, it does not smell right. Not terribly surprising, but let's see. Ooh, who just said hi from the UK? Hmm. Cool dude. Hey, cool dude. Welcome. Mark TMK, I don't know if I said hi to you. Welcome. Well, cool dude's been here, right? I thought cool dude was leaving. Okay. I'm just back up. again. Sorry. No, no problem. Uh, all right, I'm going to give this a little try. because I, I kind of feel bad because I'm pretty sure this is not going to be good. And it kind of feels like it's going to ruin the experience of all this other all stuuff that has been good. But you get to give it a try anyway. It looks like it, doesn't it? It's supposed to be vanilla. Vanilla, vanilla fudge. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah. Consistency's not bad. Hmm. Has a staleness to it. I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Let's <clears throat> see how. Oh, Mark I, TMK. See how my uh, Darwin Australia. Well, three reacts to that. Let's let that sit in the mouth for a second and, uh... <clears throat> An interesting taste, interesting kind of aftertaste, but... It doesn't have that, that burning no. sensation. It almost... Mm, something's happening. Something's happening. <laughs> um, I was gonna avoid washing it down just to, like, really get the experience, but... <clears throat> Yeah, it's not good. It's it's not. <clears throat> it's definitely not the worst I've ever experienced. Is that I'm not getting that, that like, feeling like, like like that coating on the sides of my tongue. So that's a good sign. But it's not it's not pleasant. It doesn't have a pleasant taste to it. <clears throat> it doesn't taste like vanilla fudge. Um, it, it's bad enough that I'm gonna wash it down with some ham and chicken loaf, and some beer. Yeah. It is it? I hope there's not a piece of hair in there. I don't know. All right. This has been really, really cool.
and I'm hoping at least a few people here can appreciate why I'm like so excited about this. I know it's uh, not necessarily the most exciting thing, but. And we have one final thing. The interesting thing is like the worst thing in this so far has been something I usually don't see go bad is the uh, non-dairy cream substitute. Uh, hmm. I'm not exactly sure why that would have gone bad. And it may not be. It could just it could just be the packaging, but it, <clears throat> it kind of has when you, sometimes when you open up an old MRE and it, it smells like a like an old barn. That's what the inside of this smells like, but the inside of the accessory pack that this was in smelt fine, <clears throat> and the inside of the uh, the outer bag for this MRE smelt absolutely perfect. It just smelled like plastic. So. I mean, if something's gonna go bad, I, I wouldn't mind it being the the uh, cream substitute because the coffee seems to be fine. You you thought the coffee was was okay, right, Mrs. G? Mm-hmm. Coffee was great. I'm not a good judge of coffee because I don't drink coffee, but uh, I could put some sugar in there, I suppose. But but uh, yeah, it leaves us with the fruit mix. I just gotta I keep going back to this stuff. I mean, I, this is amazing that to not have like the metallic aftertaste. It's been sitting in. Uh, like a metallic pouch for 35 years so that wouldn't necessarily even mean it's particularly bad but it's kind of amazing fruit mix uh i think this did have a date code on it right it was in the corner um yeah the 100th day of 1986 and uh you know what we'll do is we'll uh see if we can hear the hiss by uh giving a little poke here I did not hear his, but you could hear the release as it uh, became loose in there. And as soon as it does that, air is going in and it is aging. So let's get this fruit mix out of here. And um, critters, this is something you might want to try. It's kind of like the astronaut uh, food, like the astronaut ice cream and the astronaut uh, strawberries and all that. I, I, I do want to test it first. I, mean, I still want to be a responsible parent, <laughs> but I'm not expecting there to be any issues with it. Bye, Claudia. Had to balloon out. Oh, thank Bye. you for joining us, Claudia. Ooh, my favorite part, the cherries. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could reconstitute a little bit, too, but let me give this a, a quick try. Uh, we'll try the... Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, Claudia. I appreciate it. I hope, uh, hope you had some fun. hope it wasn't too drawn out. Nice crunch. Emily asked if the vanilla fudge bar is like a Charleston shoe. No, um, it does not have any kind of a, a caramel kind of uh, thing to it. I think I think Smokey did one of these too. Where I mean, it looks it's weird because it looks like like yeah, a, like a peanut looks butter. Like candy. It looks like peanut butter and you know a chocolate, like it would be a, a Hershey's kind of thing. But it's not. It's not supposed to be. It's not peanut butter. It's not supposed to be. But it just has that appearance. Um, but yeah, it's. I don't know what I would describe it as. It's almost like a like a nougat. It's not a nougat, but it's almost like a nougat, and that um, that sort of. Uh, waxy kind of uh, chocolate around it. That is so good. Mm -hmm. Are you going to die from eating it? Are you going to die from eating it? It looks like it tastes like um, fruit, uh, fruit salad. Fruit, uh, Ew. what do you call those fruit mix? Uh, I don't like it. Yeah. Beast. It's very, um, I don't know. You're crazy. Mrs. G? Bring it on. And you'll, you'll recognize this taste. Like you bite into it, and it's like this weird dry thing, but then it immediately starts reconstituting in your mouth. I'd probably like it if it were less of it. It starts and you'll, reconstituting. And you will recognize it. Let me get a little... I will? Ah! Why what? did I say it's a big bite? <laughs> oh, you know, you don't like. Well... Yeah, Mom. I just wanted to share with you. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, Puppy Breath. It's not pale. I just wanted to share with you how amazing it was. All right, it looks like I'm the only one who's really getting the amazing out of, out of this, but... Okay. I know there's others in the community that appreciate uh, the piece dried fruits. Yeah, no, it's definitely... Interesting. <laughs> so here's a little bit of water, and we'll, we'll do yeah, the, we'll do it, the it, magic. It I, I want to have most of this dry. I say I want to eat some more of these. Well, I better put some of the cherries in the uh, thing, but... Um, 
extremely dry, very crunchy. Not too much water in there. And here comes the magic. Is this magic? Oh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh, ah. Uh, it? <laughs> it's turning into fruit. Oh, that's right. It's turning oh, wait, into it's fruit. fruit? Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, no wonder why you don't like it. Wow, cool. You got 72 likes on the, on the live wow. stream tonight. You. That's awesome. We. We're down to 44. I, I know it was over 50 for a little while. It was like oh, 51. Oh, it's up to 70. 70 something. Really? Yeah. Wow, I guess I drew, uh, drew everyone off with my uh, banter. <laughs> with my, uh, my droning on and on. Uh, could, could have done a little less water, but it, it's nice because it gives it a little... Um, you can see this, this looks like it's a, a peach in here. And these must be pears. It gives it a little bit of a syrup, though. I'm going to give that like a minute, too. Actually, I probably should put a little bit more in there, too. I'm going to throw... Look at that. Just Look at that. tuned in. Clean? Clean my kicks. Welcome, clean. Hope your kicks are clean. I got some clean kicks. I just opened up. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I just opened yeah, up some uh, some new uh, sneakers that. Uh, oh, <laughs> I guess you weren't all that crazy about <laughs> well, it. Well, it just. <laughs> I thought you were giving me the whole thing to. And then I was. That's what over, she said. Whatever. I was a little ambitious. Mm. Yeah, I shouldn't. Probably shouldn't put those on two different times, but. Uh, letting that, uh, of course it's off camera, but letting that reconstitute. And while waiting for that, mm -hmm. a little more ham and chicken loaf. Yay! Just because. Oh, wow, okay, it really is the um, fruit cocktail. All right, John. Fruit cocktail, that's the word I was trying to think of. This is a fruit mix, and I was trying to... Critty, you want to try some gum? Sure. Okay. You got some attention there. Judging by how everything else has been. As I said, I don't smoke it. I don't know if you're here in the beginning, but... I've never seen this before. This gum is actually um, vacuum sealed. Oh, oh, yeah, it's got that like bend in it, and it, it doesn't want to like go away. It actually is. Uh, it's not not really tight. Is it okay? It's not gonna have a hiss or anything, but uh, that was that was kind of cool. Let me uh, just be careful because it may be it may be hard because it's really old. Don't break okay. It. Yeah, don't break don't, the tooth. Don't bite it with your front teeth, in other words. I never do that. This is the one thing I'm actually I'm letting her try it before I try it, but uh, I'm anticipating that being just fine. It's crumbly. Oh, yeah, you know, that's sort of like a matter, too. Uh, keep chewing it, and you'll see. It's one thing that's interesting about these old ones. Uh, you, you'll put it in your mouth and start chewing it, and it kind of crumbles up, and it, you're like, oh, this is just going to disappear. And then it reconstitutes back into gum. What? Gum? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Is it still all crumbly or is it, is it no. better? It's better, right? Yeah, but it doesn't go back to gum because it didn't look... Oh, yeah, well, like, you, when stuff. you first bit into it, you said it was all crumbly, so it's like it's going to turn into like a powder or something. And then, uh, okay, right. I don't know. I'll try the other one. Sorry, well, Mrs. You, G. You're going to miss out on this one. Mm -hmm. Well, you could feel that it's not... I should have done that first, but I was quite confident that was going to be good. It's not that hard. No, it wasn't. What is this? That's another good sign. That is a uh, pear. No. This is cherry. Oh. And this is uh, either peach or um, I think peach. It could be. Um, Very artificial. Uh, no, no, this is all real. It looks no, artificial. No, you know what? The other thing I was thinking it was is a uh, pineapple. Look, it's got that little line. Yeah. That's pineapple. It looks very artificial. <gasps> Hi. Um, of course the. Uh, that's not it. <clears throat> of course, it doesn't have ingredients. Uh, from Oregon Freeze Dry Food Incorporated, Albany, Oregon. I was gonna say, was Oregon freeze dried? Is that did that become Mountain House? I'm not sure if they're in Oregon though. Somebody will know. It's cool how it keeps the shape though. Because we're already eating the gum. I'm gonna get scared. The gum is fine, and now I'm gonna have a little bit of this fruit cocktail. Which it should have reconstituted by now. Mm hmm. It's it's not a great fruit cocktail. That's why it's it's better when it's uh when it's when it's dry. It's fun. It's actually kind of fun to eat. Like uh, I like astronaut food, I like the astronaut ice cream and the freeze dried strawberries and all that kind of stuff. But good stuff. I put it in in two different chunks and uh. Some of it is uh, fully constituted and reconstituted, and some of it is a little bit crunchy. All right. Um, and that is everything. I'm going to finish this because it doesn't seem like anybody else is really as crazy about this as I am. Mm -hmm. 
And it's already been out in the air for a few minutes, so it's going to start getting soggy. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it kind of like pulls in the uh, moisture from the air. And it's like kind of like stale, like in like 10 minutes, and then it just sort of, it's not crunchy anymore. But we are at the end of the review. And I think we're going to be at the end of the video, too. Mm. I had more stuff to talk about, and I had the uh, the ham, but it's 10 minutes to 9. This this ended up being so much better than I expected. So uh, I guess we'll save this for another video. <clears throat> Unless, of course, everybody wants to have it for lunch tomorrow, mm. which I don't think everybody's going to. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Uh, let me just do a quick review of stuff I wanted to... Let me tell you a little story, folks. Uh, review is done. This was quite awesome. Um, JW Speaker, MRE, thank you so much for sending this. It's the second time I've been able to travel back in time to the 80s and, and try this. I can't believe I've now had two of these, and um, they've both been edible. I think I actually have one somewhere in deep storage. I think you can see, like, the ham there. It's, a, it's definitely not just, like, a, a totally... Uh, mashed up, um, just over, uh, <clears throat> over, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of, over, uh, uh um, Minced. yeah, uh, processed, uh. overly processed kind of thing. It's, it's like, a, it's, it's like in a, in a, a bed of processed stuff and then there's these chunks of actual meat, uh, interesting combination. But very tasty. So thank you, JW Speaker and Marie. I, I can't tell you much appreciate the opportunity to do this. And I'm glad we were able to do this live. And unlike the 1987 one that uh, Steve1989 sent me, uh, I was able to share this with uh, Mrs. G. Mm -hmm. And priceless reaction. She smelt that chicken loaf and said, that smells good. Yeah. Ham and chicken loaf. <laughs> and I, I was like, that is cool. Like, I, you may not like the taste, that's fine. You may not even want to taste it, and that's fine. But to, to have that reaction from the smell of it, that is really impressive for a 35-year-old uh, loaf of ham and chicken mm. and other mechanically separated stuff. And the beans. Uh, and you were you, you actually ate the beans, right? I like the beans. You yeah, didn't those uh, were yummy. regurgitate those, so that I was that was cool too. <laughs> uh, and I'm still going after these things. I mean, these. It's, it, was, it wasn't a great thing back in 1986, but uh, to have it still be the same thing it was in 1986 it's just it's amazing mm. um yeah we didn't get to the uh we didn't really talk too much about blue apron yes. we didn't really talk about what you're doing in 1986 i was thinking that could be a big uh, a big chat topic well, other people did. for people who are okay yeah. right, well, i'll see that in the replay, yeah, I'll see that in replay. um yeah. and um um uh, mm. i'm also thinking about the possibility of doing a solo live stream. And you yes, are you away. are. Yeah. And I'm wondering how that's going to go because the Smokies have always been solo. We're out of here. Rash Museum, sometimes he has his assistants and it's just him. Um, I've never done all my, almost all my videos except for the ones with Mrs. G as a, uh, a guest reviewer and we had Inigo once and the girls have been in a few. <clears throat> but for the most part, those have all been just me. And I'm wondering if I can carry a, a live stream by myself. I will have to try to keep up with the, the chat. You practically uh, do because I'm, I'm pretty useless. <laughs> I start off strong, and then I'm like, uh, what do we have going on tomorrow? And now I've had a glass of wine, and blah ha ha For some reason, the beans are tasting less good than they did 10 oh, minutes dear. ago. <clears throat> I don't think they would uh, Austin react. says go for it. Go for the solo? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, so if, if it does come up, uh, there's you know, an opportunity for live stream, but I know Mrs. G isn't going to be available. <clears throat> I, may, that, I may still go ahead and do that. Wasn't our neighbor in the military? Or am I just imagining that? You should have which, him do it. Which one? Down the hall. Uh, well, that's tomorrow. Yeah. You could, you, uh, could, you could bring in a guest, uh, <clears throat> guest co. There you go. The, uh, or Claudia could come. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we had, uh... We did have an appearance from the guinea pigs. They did not come up on the table like I was expecting them to, but uh, at least they at least they were on screen, so that was cool. And they did do some of their weeping. That's okay, you know. What I mean? <laughs> they do do some of their their funny noises they make. They're so cute. They are so cute. And we get to see the uh, 
the the tiny house. I, was, I keep want to say mini house, but we get to see the tiny house. It was a little bonus thing that uh, hopefully wasn't too distracting. Uh, but I was very proud of the little creature for making that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. yep. The other one is uh, off doing her own thing. What is that? But she made a couple appearances. So yeah, this is pretty cool. We really kind of stuck with the the one the one subject. I know it took it, I know it took a half an hour to open before I even started opening this thing up, but. Uh, uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, I had all these notes with all these other things to talk about, and we really didn't even need to get to them. So I'll uh, I'll try to you know, pass some of the stuff along to the next one. I was going to tell a story, and now there's only five minutes left until 9 o'clock, so I'm not going to. Uh, but if I was to tell you a story about fingernail clippers, oh, dear. would that seem like I was off topic? <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that for next time. Mull that over in your head. Because I have a story about fingernail clippers, and it's it's actually not off topic, believe it or not. It's it's related to. Oh boy! All wow, this stuff. that was quite the setup. Yeah. yeah. How's that for a way to, to leave you hanging? Oh man! Haha! Uh -huh. Hanging, hangnail, mm. hangnail, fingernail clippers. Cuticle. Ah. All right, um, Mrs. G, you have any closing thoughts? I hope everybody's having a great summer and staying well, and you know, don't forget your kale, y'all. <laughs> mm, that's right. yeah. uh, anyway, great community <laughs> night. Sorry if we missed anybody on the chat. I was trying to keep up in between things, but everybody's having a great time, and we love so appreciated. Love, 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 love connecting with you guys. Bye. There's little one saying good night. She's actually been here almost the whole thing, and there's the other one. Can you say it one more time, Minnie? Bye. Yeah, we get we actually get buys from both of them. Usually they're here for like the first five minutes, and then they're off watching something. So that was actually kind of cool too. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's a G Shells Nine live stream, but it really has become like a family thing. Our family and the whole the the, the extended family of the community. Yeah. Uh, we have people from the uh, the YouTube community, and we have some friends and relatives. My sister was here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she still is, but I know she was here. So. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I appreciate it. You're actually museum. You've been here through the whole thing, haven't you? I hope, I hope this hasn't been uh, GW Speaker Company Clippers. Oh, that's that, that's actually a. a that's actually a really good guess. Um, and it's not quite that interesting, but uh, uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll see you Sunday, Rash Museum. And don't forget the Rash Museum, uh, three o'clock Eastern, I believe, correct? Is that right, is that right, Sean? Uh, on Sunday and tomorrow night, uh, the notifications will go out, but usually somewhere between eight and nine, Old Smokey will be having his uh, smoke show. And I believe, thank you, Marilyn. I believe that uh, it is going on. It's it's happening. Yeah, every once in a while he'll he'll have to cancel, but um, it's very rare. You know, it's almost every single Saturday, like clockwork. Uh, so, and I'd be looking forward to that. I'm gonna have to watch that. Most likely, I'm gonna have to watch that on the uh, on the replay. If I do show up in the chat tomorrow, folks who are regulars, uh, I may not be a hundred percent myself. Oh dear! You should stay off the chat. In which case, <laughs> you've got your reputation to preserve, there, Schultze. <laughs> All right, and now we're, now we're at in two hours, so we're going to, I don't want to say cut it short, because there's nothing really short say, about that, but, say goodnight, yeah. but uh, yeah, I want to say good night, and, and like, this has been so much fun. I hope it's been half as much fun for, for you guys, uh, and we'll leave you with a little shot of the, uh, the guinea pigs going to town on the hay. Good night, everybody. Good night. And of course, it does not have the, 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 <laughs> the, the done button so uh, maybe you're done maybe you're not let's see okay are you sure you want to stop streaming okay good night everybody <laughs> thank you so much appreciate it and I do have to take this off of here to get to the end button